High mountains have always fascinated mankind. Reaching up towards the sky, these jagged giants awaken our primal instinct to climb up to the summit. This also applies to Swiss alpinist Andreas Steindl. Born and raised in Zermatt, surrounded by 38 peaks of over 4,000 meters, he inherited his passion for mountains. But the 26-year-old mountain guide has a very special relationship to the local mountain range. The alpine summits are his playing field. He likes to run up the mountains and speed down again, just to fit in more climbs in one day. Steindl is the son of a mountain guide father and a passionate amateur mountaineer mother. At the age of 14, he climbed his first 4,000 meter peak, the Matterhorn. Today, 12 years later, he has stood more than 80 times on this iconic peak. With two hours and 57 minutes, he even holds the Matterhorn speed record from Zermatt. He has enjoyed mountain runs ever since he was a teenager. There you can see already how fast he can be. Being the fastest man on the Swiss side up the Matterhorn definitely makes Andy well known in this valley. He's completely focused. When he has a goal, he chases it. Climbing up a 4,000 metre peak is like a training session for the passionate mountaineer. He became a member of the Swiss National Ski Mountaineering Squad and the following year, he won the World Championship with the team. He's also set speed records on expeditions. Together with his friends Samuel and Simon Anthemarten, he climbed the Alpine route Infinite Spur at Mount Foraker in Alaska in only three instead of the usual five to eight days. For us climbers and for other mountaineers, it remains a competition and a sporting idea. But it's not like running around a track or swimming in the pool, it's climbing in the mountains. I was a bit nervous when I finally opened the door this morning to get going, but after a while I was actually really glad that the day had finally come and I could finally do it. I felt great and to mentally prepare and motivate myself a bit more, I listened to my favourite music on the way to the church so that everything feels perfect. I was really nervous the last few days. Last night I went for an easy ride on my mountain bike and my legs felt a bit heavy, so I thought that maybe I wasn't quite 100% recovered. Andreas Steindl has waited two years for this day. Previously, he crossed the five peaks over 4,000 meters for the first time and needed an unbelievable nine hours and three minutes for that venture. Since then, Steindl has waited for the opportunity to repeat his five peaks tour and beat his own time. At the start, I tried to get off fast to test out if I could go at a high pace or not, but I felt great from the start. I reached my first marker in Tuftern after 32 minutes. I felt good inside and good enough to keep up the speed. In the beginning, there's a wide path that leads up to the Teshut from the Teshut, but then it changes into a hiking trail which gets steeper and steeper on the way up to the glacier. It was slowly getting light as I got there. There I got the crampons out and put the headlamp away and carried on over the glacier to the Alpool saddle. 
Bin ich da hoch zum Alpubel? The Alpubel Saddle is the first point from which you can see the entire mountain range and the sun that was slowly rising. Sunrise is always outstanding, especially after walking in darkness for three hours. The day is slowly dawning with the first rays of sunlight. For me personally, that's important. I always loved seeing that. After the Alpubel saddle, you move about 4,000 meters and it gets more difficult to breathe. That's where I had my first troubles as it gets a lot more strenuous. I had to slow down to avoid wearing myself out. The snow conditions were very good. The snow was hard and there was a good track, so I found good rhythm to head up to the Alpubel. Steindl reaches the first 4,000 meter peak, the 4,206 meter high Altrubel, after three hours and 10 minutes, 22 minutes ahead of his previous time. The summit of the Alpubel is quite flat, so I could break into a bit of a jog again. But when I started going downhill, I had to slow down because it was getting steeper and you really have to watch out with trail running shoes and crampons. After about 100 meters, I didn't need the crampons anymore, so I put them away. I didn't actually need them again for the rest of the day. The way up to the Teshorn is really jagged. From time to time you have to take big strides and do a bit of climbing and then a bit more hiking. You lose the rhythm you had before and it's crucial that you find your rhythm again quickly. There are also brittle rocks here that you have to watch out for. A bit further up it gets sandy and doesn't hold together very well, so it's quite unstable. On the 4,491 meter high Tashhorn Peak, which he reaches after 4 hours and 21 minutes, Steindl runs into a group of mountaineers who needed two days for the ascent. He doesn't even pause for a second, as he's already 41 minutes ahead of his old time. Now he enters the crux, the most challenging part of the route, the traverse to the dock.
celebrating the 12th consecutive year, the shores of Bondi Beach turned up the volume. The energy of the crowd, the riders, it's just something that words can't really describe. Marking another day of exhilarating bull shredding with big names. This is Tony Hall. These guys are hard as nails. At the place where it all began. Oh, my God. Join in the party. Bolarama 2016 Bondi on Edge Sport. Witness the return of the world's most electrifying motorsport. The FIA World Rallycross Championship is back, bigger and fatter than ever. The season opener kicks off in Portugal, where the battle for a world title will commence. This is the epicenter of raw racing talent. The world's best drivers are ready. Are you? FIA World Rallycross Championship 2016. Round one, Portugal. Live on Edge Sport. Witness awe-inspiring aerial maneuvers in the halfpipe and incredible skills and trickery on the slopestyle course in the Burton U.S. Open 2016 on Edge Sport. During the crossing from the Teshom to the Dom, there are some vertical climbing passages, sheer faces with brittle rocks that you have to deal with. That's when the mental aspect comes into play because you're really exposed on that ridge. You just have to keep a level head and believe in what you're doing. You basically just have to tell yourself, if you can do it at a height of one meter, then you can do it here too. It's all about what's in your head. The Dom in the Mischabel Mountain Massif, the highest mountain lying entirely in Switzerland, a majestic 4,545-metre-high giant that saw its first ascent in 1858. Climbing it from the Teshorn side entails many risks. The Dom is definitely one of the most important spots in this project. It's the highest peak in Switzerland that's over 4,000 metres. When I reached the summit of the Dom, there were already a lot of people up there motivating me and calling out to me. For the demanding traverse from the Teshorn to the Dom, the young alpinist only needed one hour and four minutes. After that, the descent from the Dom was quite simple. You're running on snow the whole time. That means you can relax slightly, follow the track and pick up the pace. It's also fun to start moving quicker again.
After picking up the pace on the way down from the Dom to the Lenz saddle, I found the ascent to the summit of the Lenzspitz a bit exhausting. The climb in itself isn't so hard, but I was quite tired and had the first sign of cramps. I had to stop two or three times, rest for ten seconds, breathe and then carry on. Steindor reaches the fourth peak, the 4,294 meter high Lenzbitzer, after six hours and seven minutes. Meanwhile, he's increased the lead to one hour and 11 minutes. From the summit of the Lenzbitzer to the Nedelhorn, you have to climb up and over some rock towers. It's constantly up and down, you can't find any rhythm. I always prefer long ascents and long descents over constant ups and downs. When I later came to the Nadelhorn and the summit cross was in front of me, I just wanted to embrace it. It meant that the most difficult and most dangerous part was over. I was really relieved that nothing had happened because something bad can always happen. After five summits, Andy Steindl is one hour and 16 minutes ahead of his old time, and he maintained this lead until Sarsfe. Now he only has to run down 2,500 vertical meters across ice and snow and pathless terrain into the valley. After the glacier, you get to the Michabel hut. Then it's finally downhill. But in the upper part, it's uh, Via Ferrata. You have to do parts of the descent over ladders, ropes, and steel cables. You have to stay focused here. At that time, it was already getting hot, so I took my shirt off. Otherwise, I would have been sweating too much. I kept going, but I was mentally exhausted by then and lost my footing two or three times. So I had to slow down a bit to avoid tearing a ligament or breaking my foot. Although he can already see Sarsfe, it's still a long way down. He previously needed only one hour and ten minutes for this downhill run into the valley. There was a mountain stream a bit before Sansfe when I quickly washed my face to cool down a bit and then stepped on the gas for the final stretch into town. I tried to give everything I had left until the end, down onto the meadow, onto the roads and then to the church. Steindl sets a new record, 7 hours 45 minutes and 44 seconds for five peaks over 4,000 metres, 4,015 metres of vertical ascent on 31 kilometres. That was an amazing day for me. I'm over the moon now. Tired, but really happy and pleased. Yeah, what more could you ask for from a day in the mountains and with such good weather? I want to show people what's possible and maybe inspire others to head out to the mountains and experience something amazing like this.